<laughs> I don't sound it because I'm not actually. Okay, now I'm lanky yang more. <laughs> it's like, I don't sound it because I'm not. What do you want from me? Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Stone Face Reactions. I'm Theta. This is Lessons. And, well, this time at least, we're actually recording with the overlay set up. Uh, obviously, we'll see it last time because I'll have edited it into post. Uh, but. Let's see. What's we're to do first? Obviously, there's no comments. We haven't even put the episode up yet. But how about <laughs> you go ahead and recap us on what happened last time? Uh, last time, well, this seems to be a whole series about Yang Wenli um, and how he came to be essentially introductory uh, episode about we start the episode when he's talking to his father and finally saying, listen, either you go into art or you go into making money. Right. This idea of you going to study history is not a good idea. And it seems to be in a ship. So I guess it that's either their home or they're going from point A to point B. It's not really explained. And he's the captain of the ship. There seems to be a malfunction in the reactor. Father goes to check. When he comes back, he's you know has these very severe lesions in his face, probably his body, because he was exposed to radiation from the uh, malfunctioning um fusion reactor and dies. And Wailing, Wailing is, well, very, very sad about that. Um, and then we keep moving forward. We realize that Wailing's father had this business, but basically had run into the ground. He had too many debts. He also had an art collection that was made out of fakes. And so Wailing has all these debts. But probably he's just sold the assets to, you know, to get rid of the debt. But he has this, he has no money. So he has to join the military in order to study history, goes to the academy only to find out that the history uh, institute that he was to join is getting closed down because there's not enough resources. Um, and so he then says, well, I guess I just have to become a regular you know, member of the, of the Federation Navy, right? Um, and he joins his fleet. Which is a minor, this, this is described as a minor uh, engagement, just a couple of thousand ships. Uh, but even the, the Federation is, is outnumbered by the, uh, by the Empire. The Empire basically feints a retreat. Uh, and the Admiral says, in charge, okay, we're going to do the same. Boom, we're going to retreat. But, and yes, I skip about the, the simulation. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, and, uh, and then, the the enemy comes back, which sends the admiral into a panic. He runs away, which breaks up the formation even more, which means they suffer even heavier casualties. They go back to uh, the planet, around the planet La Facil, um, which is the planet they were supposed to be protecting from the Empire. Civilians panic because, um, you know, the reputation of the Empire is that they're... The reason why is apparently they're waging this war against uh, the Federation, who is a republic, is that they want to, you know, stamp out the uh, the the seeds of republicanism, right? You know, they want to reestablish everywhere that the empire and the way the empire is done is well the only way. And part of it is that if they capture civilians, which there are over three million in this planet, they send them to re-education camps, right? And so they don't want to be part of that. They want to escape. Uh, Wailing gets the job because he's literally the only person who has, doesn't have anything to do, just standing there. So he's like, hey, uh, how about you do a plan to uh, evacuate all these people? And he does, including counting on the fact that his superiors are going to, again, leave the planet and leave, try to leave the, the civilians stranded and uses them as a decoy for the actual civilian occupation, uh, escape from the planet. The Imperials do see him escaping, but they're like, nobody would escape without using radar jammers. Ah, this must be a decoy. Let them go. And so they escape. And by the way, we this is supposed to be a, a flash of brilliance that we see earlier in a context with another student who's supposed to be the best of his class, which he beats by not engaging directly with the enemy and going after his supply lines. You know. Strategy 101, I guess, but that was supposed to be a brilliant move. And so at the end of the day, the other student gets angry. We get that flash of, in, you know, inside of, you know, this, this student who has a, who's supposed to be this great strategist. And then this strategy pays off again when he uses his, well, commanding officer's cowardice to 
do his job, which is was to protect and get the civilians out of there. And that's it. Unless I forgot something. Well, no. My thing is that I was thinking while you were doing it that you're getting like a lot of minor details wrong. But I think I'm what I'm instead of my normal pedantic self, I was like, what the broad stroke is all right. So no need to interfere. Plus, I can use this to see how pedantic our comment section is going to be. <laughs> so we'll find out. Uh, but I guess the the one correction I will make, because I cannot, otherwise the itch will be in my head, is that actually we start at the uh, the, the El Paseal battle. The ba yeah, yeah, and then we, we go back, and then we come back to it. So yeah, that's just the one thing, because I don't know. I got to say something. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, I, th I think that that scene, even though that's that is correct, the the scene, the first scene that stuck in my mind was his conversation with his dad, right? Um, so that, yeah, that's where because I went technically to. it would be the furthest thing back chronologically, so that you should start there. Or not should we need a framing device? But we uh, we would start there and then just go forwards because nothing really important. Oh, well, I can't even say that because the narrator gives us information that is important. Um, yeah. Anyway, it is the setup, the framing device for a bunch of shit that happens. Um, I am going to bring up the board on the overlay here, only because it's so small and easy to get through that I can basically encapsulate it in the Theta's Thought sections into one thing. Um, when I did the DNT board, uh, I had everybody ranked by their rank, right? Like, we know uh, Arthur is, sorry, Lynch is an admiral. We know what uh, when Lee's rank is. I can't remember off the top of my head, but they always refer to him by the four-letter abbreviation, junior something. Because even, uh, even the civilians, they run up to him, and they just call him by his rank. Uh, uh, Lieutenant Junior Grade. Uh, no, I mean, they don't... The, the words are right, but they're not in the right order, because literally it does start with a J, so it must be Junior Grade something Lieutenant. Uh, anyway, uh, this time I haven't done it because there's so few characters and I don't have them list their list of ranks yet. Uh, I'll also say that as somebody who has seen the first half of DNT, I recognize that there was characters in the episode we saw that uh, aren't on here, only because they have no listed speaking parts, and I'm assuming that once they speak, they'll be a character. <laughs> well, like the... You remember when he graduates, and you have uh, Wang Li and uh, John, Jean, Jean, John, I don't know. We'll say John. John here, standing next to each other in the back row. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you remember that scene? The guy giving a speech at the front is a character. Obviously. Imagine most people that you see in the show are going to be a character. This show is going to be filled with characters. I That I know from the fact that it has... Hundreds and the dozens and dozens of characters, and there are hundreds of them. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm just explaining why the board only has six people on it so far, even though people who know the show better than us will be like, well, there was a ton of characters in there. You missed X, 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 and X. Again, I'm checking for your being pedantic comment section. <laughs> um, otherwise, again, I do. I have more thoughts here than I thought I was going to have. I have a Macross 7 level of thoughts. You had mentioned about how the character is always just standing around when realistically they would be sitting at some station on the bridge. Well, going back over the shots, there are certainly a number of positions with chairs on the bridge of the ship, but otherwise it is a wide open space with only standing positions. In the wide shot, I counted 12 people on the bridge, with uh, only 5 of them having chairs, and those were on the lower deck of the bridge. Everyone on the upper deck where the captain was, was standing. Yeah, but uh, apparently they're, they were the command group, right? So they would be assisting, the, or the, in this case, the admiral. Uh, you know, we're like, oh, yeah, this is what we're doing. But he's just to the side, like, well, that nothing to do with me. You know, I'm a junior yeah. officer. Somebody, somebody should give me a broom or something, you know, to, to be sweeping the floor. Right, but eh. I mean, I think it's, it's a dumb to... layout for a bridge, to be honest. Yeah, but yeah. but my you, you saw Gunbuster, right? I'm sorry, yeah, was that the Yeah, yeah. Uh, you've yeah, seen yeah. the bridge of those ships, right? And they're like, 
office buildings, really. There's a ton of people at uh, desks just sitting there doing paperwork and reporting. And it's like, you have a lot of space here on this bridge. That seems like what this should have been, especially because you've got upper decks where there should be like, I don't know, the open air equivalent of a ready room. Okay, everybody, you've got all your specialties. Yes, sir, I just got this engineering report in. We've been hitting the aft. You know, something. It seems like it could use that space. So I will agree, having a bunch of people standing around on a ship that's going to get rocked with weapons just doesn't seem like good planning. You know? Uh, also, it sorry, seems my like brain a, wants a, to say a, HOA again, but, you know, HIPAA is going to have a real thing with fall hazards. Uh, oh, HIPAA is for health standards. What is not? It's uh, ocean. What do you mean ocean? You know, I should know that because I used to be the safety guy of a warehouse. So my whole thing really? was uh, my whole thing was chemical safety sheets. Yeah, reports and reports and reports. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it just seems like a very open space that wastes a lot of oxygen too. Because this is there in space, right? You don't, you know, you have to air condition these spaces. You have to fill them with oxygen, otherwise people are gonna be. So in real life, ships, even modern ships, are crammed with electronics, small passages. There's even something called hot bunking, where uh, people, essentially two people, sleep in the same bed. So one is off to do whatever, the other person is resting on that bed. So that's why it's called hot bunking, because it, the, the ship, literally the, the bunk feels warm because somebody has been there before. Oh, right? So and ironically, kind of, kind of like uh, nurses at a hospital. With uh, yeah. two extra long shifts. Um, I will say, because I don't think this is a spoiler for anything, but back when I was watching DNT, I was actually had a question in my mind of how many people are on these ships? Because they're massive ships. And I think like the number I came to based on, and again, this isn't a spoiler because I'm not going to give anything away here, based on the casualty rate of a battle where we knew how many ships and then how many people were there, was like, there's 75 people on these massive ships, I feel like. I mean, one could argue that with a lot of automation, automation, propulsion spaces, guns, missiles, a lot of stuff is automatic, right? So one would think that as time goes by, you will need less people to do more. But at the same time, there comes a point where if a ship is too big, it, and especially if you're working to, you know, around the clock, because a lot of what happens with crews is a lot of the crews, essentially people have backups, right? Like you always need a station to be manned, right? Like your radar. So, but you can't have somebody 24 hours going like, you know, staring at a screen. So you need someone to take their place. So you have a doubling up of people, right? Not in all things. And also you kind of have a little bit of reserve for things like cook, like cooking staff and, uh, you know, people are, and you double train people to be firefighters and I other think stuff like that. So, yeah. That the irony is that you started saying that statement, but in my head, I had already thought of, well, if this war has been going on for a long time, maybe it's the reverse problem that they're completely understaffed. We've got too many ships, not enough people. Which begs the question: Why is a junior officer who should be doing something just standing there, like? Uh, Nothing to do with me. Nobody's giving me an order. Eh, I don't care. Well, this was more right. of a comment about you were talking about him standing around and not the actual activity of him standing around. I've got a, a future yeah. thought that relates to your um, derision or suggestion of their incompetence that might be more leaning into that. Uh, but since I wrote these in order, we're going to go back in time now. <laughs> so. Uh, the impetus of his dad's point of view was not to hate money, as it would let you not have to work for people you hate, or sacrifice your principles. Then, for some reason, he oddly twists it into politics, saying politicians are okay as long as we are firmly in charge of them, which feels like it has absolutely nothing to do with the conversation. I think that sounds like a rich man speaking, right? Well, he's supposed to be rich. He has we know he's not, though. Has. Yeah, he's just heavily leveraged. So it's like, oh, we are... It might be a, an implication that his class of people are the people who are really in charge, right? Now that you're going to study something... Listen, if you go to money, realize that the people with money are people who really run the Federation. So, you know, that's what I'm, I'm trying to say here. 
Well, I just mean the conversation is really, look, Dad, this is what I'd like to do with my life. And that's why Donald Trump cannot be... <laughs> it's like, what? Where did we get? Yeah. His dad seemed to be a bit kooky as well. Like, he was a little bit out there. Like, eh. Yeah, but at the end of the day, he spocked himself, so he couldn't have been that bad. I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I'm just saying that, you know, he was a little out there. I liked him for all the five seconds he was on screen. Yeah, good mustache. Likeable character. Yeah, good likeable character. He had your mustache, actually, looking at the board. (laughs) Uh, So, when his dad died, Yang gets told that there are, oh, sorry, that there were many liens against his dad's company property in need of repayment, and that otherwise the company was in severe debt. We know the art uh, came to nothing in terms of being able to repay the debt, so assumedly the people that were owed just followed through and took the company's property in lieu of payment. I guess then that it all came out even in the end? Like, this aspect of everything was so nebulous that if I didn't already know that this show was about intergalactic politics and war... I'd be wondering if I should expect someone to appear down the road with a massive bill that they'd be trying to extort Yang with. Well, I guess he, if if it follows the rules of, of corporate bankruptcy, say, United you know, States or the Western nations, yeah, those liens means that essentially what a lien means, you cannot sell the property because it, when the moment you do, I mean, you can't sell it. I mean, it doesn't stop you from selling the property. It's just that the person who has a lien becomes the first person to get money. So if I have a lien and I owe you $20,000 out of a $100,000 property, before I do anything else, the moment I sell it, I have to take $20,000 off and give it to you because you have that lien to pay off. Now, the liens can exceed the property value in which then the person can then say, well, in lieu of payment, I'll take this entire building. Yeah, Ali can be another yo, version of collateral. Yeah, uh, two point five million. This building is one point seven. You're you're in bankruptcy, so we'll settle for the difference. I get the building, and you know I'll free you from the debt. Right? The idea, the idea being in corporations that you don't want, you don't want corporate assets, we corporate assets to be reused and not just stay there empty for years, which still happens. Uh, and also, you don't want people who are in the corporate sector to be prohibited from going back and and starting new businesses. Yeah. Even though clearly they have shown they have failed. So. I think this is my experience with anime is more so that I... God, what is that woman's... The woman's name from... Uh, not Outlaw Star. Now my brain's just going other directions. Uh, <laughs> Cowboy Bebop. Uh-huh. Which one? The... Uh, the adult the girl, woman. The, uh, the one... Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Uh, Faye Valentine. Faye Valentine, yeah. How Faye Valentine has outstanding debt due to her medical situation, which she doesn't remember, obviously, and that people will just show up, you know, trying to get that money or have been the worst kind of money collectors, bounty hunter money collectors, trying after. It's so like I said, if I didn't know what this show was about and I was just going in with this one episode, I'm like, is this going to be a Faye Valentine scenario? Or I mean, hear about be. your dad's company debt. Yeah. Again, I'm presupposing that they're following American law or similar situations. The Federation is like that. If it isn't, it could be anything. You know? yeah. Right. I have to wonder, and by the way, I'm going to keep calling him Yang from now on. I understand that the the, uh, the form of his name is actually more like Wen Li Yang, if we were going to westernize it, uh, that his dad was also Yang. But his dad's dead, and we don't know he has any other family, so he's Yang to me. Hey, none. I have to wonder if Yang wasn't just getting jerked around by everyone around him looking to take advantage. Like the art inspector saying everything is fake, not even worth one dinar. A good fake still has resale value. A reproduction has resale value. I get that it's being shown that his dad was a bad businessman, despite his own advice on the matter, but I've seen enough storage wars to know that this stuff wouldn't just amount to nothing. Uh, it could be just shorthand to, oh, compared to what you thought this was worth, it's worth so little that the resale value will not get you anything for it. 
And actually, when he says, I'll hand you the bill, it's like literally, you could sell all this stuff, say a couple hundred dollars, but I charge you $10,000 for being here. So by the time you're done moving this stuff and selling it, you could probably cover my bill that kind of way, right? But it also feels like he didn't have any contact with the people that were like, oh, your your family. It could also be that way. I, I actually, I felt that when he was talking to the people saying that his, your dad is heavily leveraged, right? I don't know if it was in a bank or talking to the, you know, the, 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 the board of the co corporation. It's like, oh yeah, it turns out that your dad was heavily leveraged. And we are going to be so grateful to leave, you know, to buy all that property from you, all the ships and buildings and, you know, whatever, you know, we're at a very low price just to make sure that you, you out of debt. How about that young man? Because I've seen that in other animes, right? That's what I'm like, saying. It seems like he was really yeah. taken advantage of. Yeah, um, but I, we don't we don't get any any follow through, right? And he doesn't seem to be dumb enough to fall for it. I mean, he's supposed to be this very smart person. I but think I he was, savvy. in fact, implied to be dumb enough to fall for it. If if that's in yeah. fact what's happening, in that yeah. he just goes through it, like he also, doesn't care, is the thing. Well, I mean, his father is dead, and apparently has no other family. So it's like, I can sense the. I just want to get through this and just be done with it. Although well, his facial expression is like, huh? well, they, they literally my like, ah. my next comment is literally all about that part. Uh, well, an element of it. I know that you took issue with Yang's laissez-faire attitude, but I think that's the real impetus of the episode. That even when life is at its worst, this is the character of Yang. That moving forwards, no matter what we see put in front of him, he's not going to be like Lynch, who freaks out, or even Gene, who doggedly gets stuff done, but some super calm middle ground that just goes with the flow. Yeah. I think, again, that's what I'm saying. I think the point of the situation is, hey, look, your dad's dead. Oh, man. Hey, look, your company's going under. Oh, man. Hey, look, all the shit that you thought was going to be a good backup for your future isn't worth anything. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, there's no way we're going to get you into that education thing that you wanted. Oh, man. Hey, every all of our resources are being spent. We have to close that one window of the education program that you had. Oh, man. <laughs> Just who he is. Also, apologies if you hear so not noise from my side there, you know, doing uh, cutting the grass and stuff like that. Every so often I hear this uh, whooshy noise, but I'm pretty sure that the filter is going to take care of it. Plus the fact now I do everything in post. So the same thing that I, I'm sure you hear shit coming, wind noises coming through my mic. I edit those okay. out with noise reduction filters. I scan the, the wave files and like, okay, cut this out, sample that, remove that from the rest doing so much more shit these days. A theme in the first episode that we talked about for a bit was how a lack of resources has essentially molded Yang's life. First the loss of his dad, then the debt of the company, and then the lack of value in anything his father collected, that the Free Planets Alliance then offers a an avenue for free schooling, particularly in the areas of Yang's interest, being what directs him into the path of the military, even as the resource narrative progresses. From the very get-go, Yang is told that due to the ongoing war, the education budget has been reduced, something which only continues years later when the course uh, he is studying gets cut for that same reason. Everything in Yang's life seems to be the effects of the war, taking away resources, which shrinks Yang's options down to the point that he has a very clear path ahead of him. Yeah, pretty much. But, well, I, you know, I want to say is like, there might be also an element of trying to make sure, I should have said it last time, that, that Wang uh, is his own person, right? That even though he came ostensibly from a you know privileged background and father owned this company at the end of the day none of that was his to begin with well and he was so also he against get... following the footsteps he wanted to go his yeah. own path but he's yeah, going so... against the path that was trying to be laid out for him 
and is fighting against that in that the war is also denying him what what he chose i used to tell people maybe to the negative effect maybe i was like a negative public speaker but i used to tell people that life is like a funnel and that the older you get the the close more close the funnel gets because the more less options are available to you so the younger you are the more choices you have to pursue things especially those things that require you to get like years of education and have physical ability and whatnot. Like if you want to be like a test pilot or an astronaut, you got to start aiming at that pretty early. So the longer you go in life, the more that funnel closes up until you are where you are. And um, where where I use the funnel to represent age, obviously we can use the same funnel uh, narrative on Yang as resources in the world. Being that he, we clearly and easily define him early on as broke. All he has is outreach programs, basically, to support what he wants to do in life. And the longer the war goes on, the more those resources start drying up, the the thinner that th- uh, funnel starts to get. So maybe he had an option this way, be an option that way. No, no, no. Now it's all straight and narrow. We got nothing left for you, buddy. Uh, when it comes to the simulation against Wideborn, you were mentioning how it feels like all this was done to show how everyone in the military is stupid. Uh, forgetting for the moment that these are all college-age students, it appears like. Uh, the sense that I get is that these are just low-tier RTS players. Uh, what Wideborn did was no different from playing StarCraft, focusing on your assault across the map and not realizing that your expansion bases got destroyed. Uh, He got lost in the micro and didn't pay attention to his support. It happens. Uh, I mean, it's a simulator with just himself. He's not standing on the bridge getting reports from people or anything. I mean, I just don't think it's something we can really use to extrapolate the incompetence of the entire military from. True. But again, like I said, there's a difference between, oh, he's... Because... Again, if you were trying to, maybe just the, the 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 writers didn't think that was important enough. But usually, in a scene, in, in in a scene like this, you would have like a like a like a professor hovering over them. And I, I point, agree with you on out, that um, one. Yeah, yeah. But it but could like, be uh, also that the simulator is not that important to the teaching. Yeah. Well, Again, it was important important to him because he said, "I need to get high grades in this next thing," which he did in order to pass. I have a different so, uh, comment about that element, but. It feels like it feels like Wideborn is a diamond tier StarCraft player who got put up against a general in an actual fight, and it turns out that you can't one for one StarCraft with an actual battlefield, and that's what he's getting owned in. Like these are it's a simulation. Literally it's just a computer telling, Oh, you can't do that because this you know? And he's like, Okay, I'm gonna Right click over here, I'm gonna micro all of these guys into one uh macro unit. I'm gonna take the carrier fleet and I'm gonna go take out the Terran base over there. Oh wait, what? Turns out that he's got this other he Zerg rushed me uh on all my expansion bases and now I can't pay all the Vespine gas costs to rebuild all the fighter units on my carriers. Or you don't have enough pylons. Well the supply thing, so I'm just trying to use the supply as the narrative here that he didn't yeah. notice that he kept spamming to rebuild the fighters on the carriers, not noticing that the Vespine gas on his uh, bar wasn't going up as it should if his bases were still there. So yeah, I'm not going to blame Wideboard for being dumb, because one, he's a young guy in college, and two, I think they're just playing StarCraft. I will blame the school alongside you for not, like, monitoring that shit, because clearly the popularity of these kids in the simulator is also indicating to them who's best at stuff. And if you say, oh, that guy's the top of the top, you're going to emulate him. And if you're emulating the guy who's not actually very good at fighting because he's good at the simulated game of fighting, you're going to get your ass kicked. Uh, The very next scene, when the history program is being shut down and he gets moved to the strategy research department, and his instructor tells him how it is a prestigious move 
as if he fails there, he'll just be uh, moved to a lesser department. Makes me think of video game high school. Uh, when Gang was on the simulator, he got really high ranks in strategy, as shown by the readout when Wideborn throws his headset at the screen. It has exactly the same feel as in video game high school when Brian accidentally defeats the law and gets admitted to the school. Yang defeated the best and is getting elevated to the next best department as a side effect. No notes there. I would like to. I would like a someone from video game high school to say, "Oh yeah, we did watch Legend of the Galactic Heroes." <laughs> in fact, you know, you mentioned one it, of yeah. those really weird. Yeah, this is all actually just Legend of the Galactic Heroes, but as a Kai in a video game high school. In Admiral Lynch's route back to Alpha Seal, we are told that 200 ships made it back. So his decision to cut and run without giving orders to the fleet resulted in him losing 80% of his force. Sorry, that was one of the things you got wrong about it, that we got told exactly how many people were on, not people, ships were on both, not exactly either, I was wrong on that one. They said about 1,000 ships on both sides. So we know that they were in even force before everything. So that means that 200 uh, making it back means he lost 80% of the force that he was in charge of. Mm -hmm. If we were going to use anything as an example of incompetence in the Alliance Navy, this should be that thing. Especially when they say that the bridge crew thought that he was deserting. Mm -hmm. it's like, shouldn't you be responsible for making sure that the one guy giving orders doesn't fuck this all up. I mean, we know that they don't, because they eventually then tried to escape the planet with him, so they were in on board the whole time. And race of white flags. It's a great, great shipbuilding decision. Part of our discussion in regards to the evacuation had been about how much the Empire actually cared about evacuating uh, civilians. Sorry, that's not what I meant to write there. Uh, I guess about how much they cared about capturing civilians. Literally the opposite thing. I must have been watching the scene and writing at the same time. Uh, while the narrator says what the pretense the Empire uses as justification for taking the planets, i.e. the re-education of the citizens, uh, but they actually send them to forced labor camps where they end up dying. So when you said that they send them to re-education camps, not really. They sent them to the... Uh, Gulag, not the gulags. Sorry, Siberia is what I meant to say. Yeah, the gulags in Siberia. Yeah. Uh, da, da, da. it never actually states what the goal of this particular invasion is. The political justification for entering a conflict can easily be separate from the actual reason. Operation Iraqi Freedom comes to mind. Uh, at the same time, the narrator says that uh, once they found out that they really were escaping refugees and they threw down their celebration glasses mortified, nah. I feel like a, de a less direct and more nebulous reason for the escape would have been better served, but I'm obviously on the Imperial side in this watch, so. Well, you know, it's that, um, sir, there's an escape pod on the sensors. There's no life science aboard. Ah, just let it go. Could have killed two droids. That would have, you know, stopped the whole damn thing. Would have cost you nothing. Just a little bit of Tybena gas, at most, for firing the blaster. A little world-building note. We know that Gang studied on... I'm sorry, I'm saying this wrong. Hennison where the Free Planets Alliance Defense Force School is located, so presumably an important planet. On El Fasil, the listed flights off-world included a listing of 13 worlds and 16 flights. Four different flights were scheduled to go to Heineson, which I think serves to indicate its importance in a way that is more show, not tell. Uh, it was the only planet on the list that had more than one flight going. And lastly, an interesting note uh, I took directly off of the uh, the site that I got the characters that were in the episode from. The book Yang's Lady Generals, which Yang was reading, that's the one that he had laying over top of his face when he was laying on the grass, 
is a reference to the legendary heroines hailing from the celebrated Yang family in Chinese folklore, which is in turn based on an actual Yang family whose various members served in the army of the Northern Han Kingdom and later the Song Dynasty between the 10th and 11th century. I mean, yeah. I said lastly, but you hadn't said anything for the last three comments. <laughs> I mean, I'm just listening. I mean, I agree with you. Oh, it's, man. It's, you know, I mean, it is interesting. I think they're trying to evoke that Sun Tzu style philosopher general, perhaps, idea that then comes from that tradition. Or he's just trying to tie him to existing history. Yeah. Or existing, well, no. Sorry, the the middle step there of being legendary in the show, but being real in real life is just the the weird step in between. You could just make them connected. I, yeah, I mean, you could just make them connected. That Yang I mean, is how, descended we, from the Yang. How far? I mean, we have these calendars, but we don't know how far in our timeline they are in the future. That hundreds of years, thousands of years, tens of thousands. Lessons rule. Okay. Well, lessons rule. I think. Problem is, I had a theory in D and T, which I think was right. Obviously, I think all my theories are right, but I think it's right due to math. But if the show, if the show should tell us, unless D and T made it up for itself, the show should tell us. And obviously, I'm not going to like tell you ahead of time. Oh, it it, it might tell us if it thinks it's important. But then again, like in UC and Gundam, it's like, well, it's a new timeline. Oh, what is it? Doesn't matter. We're in a new timeline. Don't worry about it. Well, you say it should tell us if it feels it's important. We're doing the Macross thing of watching everything. So... No, no, even, I know, I know. But even if it doesn't know, think it's important, it, we should stumble upon that not important thing still. I, it, I think only would make a reference if the show writers thought that Tying into our timeline, it's important. Like I'm making, the, I'm making the Gundam before. Like they, when they went, you see, they were kind of future proofing it. Like, oh, we're not gonna say this a hundred, although they did anno nominate later on. I mean, you know, literally, the, the one of the first things I did in Origin was try to figure out where it was in the actual timeline. I don't remember if I did it with us. I certainly did it with Griffin. No, no, I did it with us because I, I read the thing that I read to Griffin. <laughs> Which was figuring out uh, Rose Lucia and Zeon's whole relationship by a timeline to the fact that they said they're second generation colonists. How long is a generation in a human lifespan? Well, it's an average of these numbers. And how long that would mean that humans started going to space, which falls to UC quadruple zero. I don't know how to say straight zeros. The fact they start with like four numbers, I don't know. I mean, but yeah, but we don't know exactly which number is uh, year one, right? The year before year one, because you don't start a year zero. You start a year one in any new calendar, usually. Yes, to make it more confusing, because otherwise zero means that there's no year. Um, so let's say it was 1989 is year, the last year of Anno Nomine, which is, you know, the way we use uh, the the Roman calendar, actually more than Roman calendar, Caesarian calendar, then year one would be 1990, which becomes UC0001, right? Or simply UC1. But since we don't have that preceding year that comes no, to no, calendar... No, no, sorry. I'm realizing that I'm mixing up two different things. I did it with UC only to find what year zero would be or that it lines up with the first generation of space colonists, in which from Mercury... I used tangential information to try and figure it out only because there's a character in like one of the mangas that references a specific technology that predates what they're using now and that their family kind of invented it. But that technology is like on the cusp of being invented today. So trying to just using who invented that when to say, okay, this, and then using the dates that we know from that to forward date it to figure that shit out. Yeah, but uh, it's it's a thing that a, lo a, a lot, including uh, probably they're doing here, is like, oh, this is in the future, but we're not going to give you a year because we're kind of future-proofing things. We know things are going to change. So it's like, oh, this is the future, right? Even if, you know, you go back to Gun original Gundam or the 1980s with Legend of the Heroes, it's like, 
we're way past you know floppy disk or whatever it's they're using, right? It's but hey, it's the future, so who cares? Yeah, it's the difference between um, sci-fi writers who use the existing technology to extrapolate what will be, and sci-fi authors who just branch off, right? Like I remember a Gateway series. They go to like crystal technology where everything is just on fucking crystals, which, you know, is kind of dumb, but it is its own thing, and it kind of makes sense. Crystal technology is a thing. I mean, like, uh, piezoelectronic crystals is a real-life technology, so you should just about everything. I've been on five uses it. Uh, In a way, Star Trek switched to that. Sorry, I'm calling it dumb, because uh, the Heechee, which is the lost civilization that we find all their tech for, you just find these crystal things all over the place. Like, imagine if you were just left CDs lying around. Like, if that was the, you know, we find human uh, space uh, stations just abandoned all over the place. And God damn it, who left all these AOL CDs, you know? <laughs> it's the equivalent. That's why I think it's dumb. Not like crystal technology is dumb, but just. It must be very important. AOL must have been, you know, a significant thing in their lives. It's like. Oh, you get an idea. Well, can you imagine? <laughs> you imagine like the movie AI, where human uh, civilization dies and the aliens come, and it's just whatever we left behind. And the first thing they dig up is all the ET cartridges buried out in the desert. I was like, must have meant a lot to them. Like, okay, well, the irony there being that they're ET cartridges too. Yeah. Uh. Anyway. Uh. Anything else you want to bring up before we get into the second episode of backstory? Yeah. Two out of 14, I think, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. The uh, the chronological order we're going for is, I forgot what this is called, Spiral Pathway? Something? Spiral la- Labyrinth. So, yeah, the Spiral Labyrinth, which makes me think of Curran Logon, actually. But, um, yeah, this one's 14 episodes, and there's a, next one is four episodes, and after that, the last thing we're going to watch is the actual show. So... We'll be watching movies before we get to the show. Mm. But yeah, let's go ahead and hop on into it. But before we get started, make sure that you hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, comment down below to feed that algorithm. On top of all that, if you want to watch more shows like this, unfiltered, uncensored, and uncut, as well as some early access stuff, you can check it out over on the Patreon. It's just $5 a month, but hey, no pressure. There's zero pressure in order to do that. It's just a little bit of extra support, and it would be greatly appreciated. You had also commented about not being super pleased with the art style. I mean, some of the art style is nice. The character's art style is nice, but the battle sequences, like the ships just sort of explode in these puffy balls, like, like oh, wow. The characters are well... well I mean, to be fair, I don't think you can complain then. Literally, they're making you say, oh, wow, which is typically a great (laughs) thing to say if you're, like, impressed. I would say, obviously, I don't hear things as well when we're watching them because I'm muffled and I have to turn it down to make sure my stupid-ass mic doesn't pick it up. (laughs) But hearing this in editing, it's, it's a bit weird. Um, but otherwise, yeah, no, I don't have much of a problem, although... Also, if you, we were watching Yang's story, but we have this character, we spend like a minute or so with him, and all these flashes of what he is, like, oh, he must be the main character, right? Which, I know he is one of the main characters, but still. I am really trying hard to not constantly keep making reference to DNT, but... Like, the first four episodes of D&T go back and forth between these two characters. Like, you get one character with, uh, sorry, you get one episode with uh, him, to be named, mm-hmm. and and then the next episode is Gang's perspective of everything that's happening, and then back and forth, back and forth, and then to get, like, branches of episodes that are cent- character-centric. No, I was going to say that the um, character art style kind of reminds me of, like, old Rankin Bass. Like better, bit. better animated uh, Lord of the Rings, the animated Lord of the Rings. Also, I, I mentioned this before, but the, the difference between their uniforms, the Empire clearly is very highly stylized with all this silver trim and and black, and the Federation is just green. I mean, yeah, it's 
some detail, but it's just for green, right? I think it's the same year. That's why they included the uh, time. Yeah. Oh, like in, in, in Gundam, where they give double promotions all, all over the place. Especially a member of the family. The implication is they had to wait a little bit before giving him another promotion. In this case, they waited six hours. We saved all of them. I know that was the case. I knew there was three million people to save. I just thought he saved most of them or something. Yeah, that's the case. The planet was named after him. Oh, he looks very stern. Right? <laughs> I mean, he's the founder of a resistance after breaking out of an Antarctic penal colony or whatever they said. Yeah. See, now this, this I like, because he's like, I detest this guy. This guy is just a bureaucrat, right? He's saying all this stuff, but he's never going to be in danger, you know, personally in danger, right? Praising me about stuff that I just had to do. <笑>まあ、or the lieutenant assigned to you from the public relations office. Manager? Yeah,何でもない。では早速ですが、今後のスケジュールを申し上げます。あ、なんか、ベケーションしてる。この人も介護を。この人も介護を。この人も介護を。この人も介護を。この人も介護を。この人も介護を。この人も介護を。この人も介護を。この人も介護を。この人も介護を。この人も介護を。この人も介護を。
Oh, that's awkward. Yeah, the man I use. Widow. I thought he surrendered. I was just thinking. I guess MIA AIA situation. She seems surprisingly happy. She got kicked out of the house. Oh, not my mom, but my stepmom. I do need a housekeeper. I don't think she would be a stepmother if you were born later. Well, technically, it's just your dad's wife that isn't your mom, yeah. so stepmom. Yeah. いや、無理もない。君はまだ小さかったから。yeah, this guy probably. Yeah, that was a good way to make an in on this guy. Your dad was a piece of shit. Can you? Well, his mother's dead, so technically yeah. not kidnapping. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, unless there was an active custody battle, in which case you're yeah. trying to abscond with the child. Well, thank you for trying your best, I guess. Yeah, where well, all these people where I needed the money. I guess the argument being that if they had paid for him, he wouldn't have become a hero. Yeah, I guess that's true. Oh, oh, okay, this is a bit intrusive. Why did you save three million people? Become a captain and then a command, a uh, general or an admiral in this case? I mean, right now he's just a hero, right? Not like he's a galactic hero or something. <laughs> He saw something in him. I like the guy in the background who turned around to get a, uh, huh? and then the next thing, yeah, I just turned back around. That's fine. I figured it out. I guess, wow, dude, you gotta clean up your place. Or, or you soldier, that you're mess. Yeah, for a soldier you're, or sailor in this case, you're very messy. Dirty bar barracks room for people who get, who get the reference. Oh, 
That was a good touch. Yeah, I like having the little like recording thing in the upper corner, and then he answers the phone and it goes away. <laughs> oh, right, Gene. But chinned Gene. Also, very interesting that this is playing Hansen, right? And it's October and it's fall. So, I guess it has the same seasons as Earth? Or it's just. It's always fall in October in every planet, I guess. Only one way to find out. That's a, things change. Technically, Gene made him the hero of Alpha Seal. Lynch said, find me somebody who's not, who has a lot of time on their hands to oh, plan yeah. the evacuation. He just, like, looks around the room. That guy. Yeah. I mean, he could have failed at his assignment, in which case he wouldn't have been a hero. But he was so successful at it that he became a hero. Well, Yang himself says anybody could have done this. So, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're a prisoner or dead. If that's what happened to the Admiral. Well, I mean, like I said, they're considering him dead, so... Taking MIA to the logical extreme, I guess. So it's a... It's a little like he had a bonded on for a second. Um, it's just a debate we've been having in Gundam Seed for a while, because they keep calling people that are MIA dead. It's like, no, yeah. there's a difference between AI, and then they just use them interchangeably, so. Like, it, at least in the US military, they will go to great lengths not to say someone is KIA. They even will say MIA, possibly KIA, but we still listen to MIA until we... Until the end, that's that uh, discussion yeah. we had before about how dark some of these Gundam universes are trying to show themselves to be. Well, like your public relations officer? Yeah,いるのは分かっている。おとなしく電話に出ろ。どうせ超人環境してつまらん考え事でもしてるんだろ。どうしてみんなわかるんだ。やっぱり来たな。I think I was wrong a second ago. I think this is Gene. Uh, I don't know who the other guy is. I don't remember. I was just saying, I didn't remember Gene having a butt chin. So that's where I'm like, wait a second.歯科学校在籍中に組織工学に関する論文を発表して大企業の経営陣からスカウトされた経歴を持つほどの秀才で補給と広報支援の専門家として将来を期待されている軍官僚である。しかしながら、反骨性の一部上層部には受けが悪い
一つ確かなことは軍隊に入って10年未満のお前さんにはまだ年金を受け取る資格がないということさ士官学校の入学時点から計算しても5年あと5年は我慢しなくてはならんということだ Assuming we do count your enrollment to the military academy as part of that time. So, so, you know, John Lovell Rapp to Attazo. My son no goto, Doki no Hokori dato. So he was Gene the first call. You are in the Gaku desne. Or at the very least, this is not Gene. By the admission that I just talked to Gene. What does she are Doki de Chiban Shusesunua? Rapp daro to Motirundis. Gagnen no Shusekua, Wide Bone dataro? Wide Bone wa, Lini Katamuku Keko Narushi. 何より他人の欠点や失敗をえぐるような一面があって同級生や下級生の辛抱が薄かったですからね正気としてはラップの方が上だと思います正気人格的な美点というやつかところで尊敬すべきラップ氏の件は置いてだなブルース・アッシュビー元帥の名を知らないってことはないよなそこまで無知だと思われるのはさすがに心外ですね43年前第二次ティアマト海戦で同盟軍を干渉に導き自らは戦死した同盟軍史上最高の英雄とされる人物じゃないですか歴史にだけは強い I guess this is how we're doing exposition 人間一つぐらいは取り柄があるもんだ I mean, it's a good way of having a conversation, you know, it's a little more animated than having someone tell you or put text on the screen 戦死でなきゃなんです By who? Yeah, but it was literally just say, as you already know, conversation. Yeah, but it was literally just say, as you Okay, I thought we were being like monitored or something. Yeah. I was like, no, just the chair over here. Okay, so this is going to be like a long conversation that we have to have with him. それまでも戦えば必ず勝っているご苦労彼と名声を等しくする軍事的英雄といえばダゴン聖域海戦におけるリンパオユースフートパロールの両元帥ぐらいしかいないさてそもそもの出発点は統合作戦本部に当初があったことだ過去36週間に36通毎週火曜日に届くので俺たちは火曜日通信と呼んでいたがねブルース・アシュビーは暴殺された。<笑> Somebody just keeps sending them letters saying, Yeah, the guy got murdered. だが、But no other details. には何らかの意図があるのだろう。で、軍首脳部は形式を整える気になったわけだ。形式を整えるつまりだ、ブルース・アシュビーの死が間違いなく戦死であって、暴殺の可能性などないということを証明するのがその目的さ。Yeah, they assigned it to a guy who has too much time on his hands. Yeah, but they can do that for the rest of the day. I mean, if it's a conspiracy theory, the people still are going to believe in the conspiracy. We may have less people believing in it, but still. Because you have too much time on your hands. I mean, is it a conspiracy theory, or is it just one guy sending a letter every Tuesday? Yeah. Guy with a printer and nothing else to do. I don't think he's going to be able to do it. I don't think he's going to be able to do it. I don't think he's going to be able to do it. I don't think he's going to be able to do it. I'm not actually. Okay, now I'm lanking Yang. <laughs> More <laughs> like, I don't sign it because I'm not. What do you want from me? I mean, beyond the, the love life aspect, he is very much an Akaru character. Yeah, I mean, 
その下見をさせられるなんてごめんですましてそんな軍部の工作が明るみに出た時責任を取らされるのもまっぴらですそこまで気を回さなくてもいいじゃあ何ですモラトリアムだよお前さんは功績を立てすぎたんだでお前さんの新しい処遇がにわかには決まらない各部署の調整にも時間がかかる We promoted you twice in six hours but don't actually plan to do anything with you お前さんにはそれなりに一石数兆の効果があるというわけさ It's difficult to put someone so young in command of people who are elder. You already saw the other guys talking. Like, yeah, he's not going to amount to anything, blah, 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 right? Already kind of talking him down. But there was something about the Admiral showing up and smiling at him, I think, is significant.、Oh. We're already done? This is a weird ending. Let's see it's a multi parter or something. Yeah. No, as much of a multi parter as this is a continued storyline already. Yeah, yeah. Although he would have felt ashamed by that at all. It's the goal. I miss something? Okay. Yeah. I don't... Yeah. Who is she? <laughs> hey, remember that one blonde that we didn't. I have to think that maybe that was a scene from like the main series that we didn't get yet. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's a thing I said in my notes. So, I think I said it in my notes. So, I think I said it in my notes. So, I think I said it in my notes. So, I think I said it in my notes. So, I think I said it in my notes. So, I think I said it in my notes. So, I think I said it in my notes. So, I think I said it in my notes. I mean, this is making a lot about these are your orders, go do them. You know, oh, this is, I guess it's, they had to explain why he was so good with subordinates that he just didn't order him, he convinced him to do it. But it's like, in any other situation, we got this crazy guy sending out a letter. You, you got nothing but to do, investigate it. That, that is all. Yes, nothing said that the legends of the Galactic Heroes had to be the current heroes. Or that they couldn't be in the Mafia. Well, I mean, it's. It's a joke. That, I don't think. I don't think that only. I know. I know you're reacting. It's like that's a joke. I understand that the seven, the year seven, was it seven thirty? Seven thirty. Yeah. Yeah. The year seven thirty mafia is just like the Rat Pack, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. I don't think they're actually rats in a pack. Like the E, like the E four mafia for people who might get that reference. Um. But yeah, no. When you were talking about um, uh, his age and older people, I was thinking more back towards the public relations officer and how we already covered、yeah. that. Uh, people going through the、um, academy can already see Lieutenant being the dead end of their career path versus his rise to stardom. Sorry, the thing that actually comes to my mind is oh shit, what is. Sorry, who was the dad in Le-、uh, Game of Thrones? Not Game of Thrones. Yeah, Game of Thrones. The dad in Game of Thrones, the actor. Season one,、uh, who gets his head cut off. Edward Stark. Edward Stark. Ned Stark. Edward Stark.、Oh, Ed, no, the actor's Ned, name. Sean Bean. Sean Bean. What was the name of the series Sean Bean did for television and the BBC where he is a. Sharp. Sharp. Yeah.、Uh, where Sharp should not reach the rank that he's in and he has a problem commanding his people because he comes from where he comes from. Yeah. You're one of us. How the fuck you can tell us what to do versus. 
the actual officer, which are like landed nobility with family ties to everything like that. That's what it makes me think of. Not so much the age, you know, they do look oddly older, every officer. But that's mostly because of the hairstyles and everything that's required of, you know, an officer has to have a mustache and a beard. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know that in that series, a young, what's his name, the guy who was the last James Bond, he appeared in that series. A lot of actors did, actually. Famous it's actors. a really good series. I've watched four, five. Very, lo- Very low budget, but still. I mean, the last one I watched is the one where he uh, finds the woman in Spain, where they uh, save the prince guy or whatever, and they do that yeah. charge over the top of the hill, which is supposed to kill him. But... It actually he goes all the way to India. There's the last series is uh, in India. Uh, I know. I think I've seen a clip of that only to see what happens to. Oh God, the guy who le- tries to leave him for dead by blowing up the bridge that he was supposed yeah, to blow up and then sh- orders the charge. Yeah. Yeah, he shows up later, like, delirious on a bed uh, because they tortured him or something, and I think that's that takes place in India, so that guy shows up near the end of the series. I only watched where I watched, and then I was like, before I give up, not because I don't like it, but because I had a lot of shit going on, uh, I want to know what happened to that guy. That guy was like a big bad for a long time. I want to know if he ever comes back. Anyway, um, my imp- uh, implication there was that Sharp would be Yang in that scenario. Uh, hoisted above where he even wanted to be. You can see, because Yang is trying to already retire. Um, and having to deal with the consequences of, I know no one's going to listen to me. I am too young. Or I'm in an inappropriate scenario. And we already see people in the background, as you already pointed out, already saying there's no way he's going anywhere. But then again, the public relations officer is an old man who's just doing his job. Yeah. I lo- okay, last episode it seemed like it was too like lacidal, if that is the way you say that. But here like you can actually see like, lackluster. like which one of those like lust, like I say like Stacy, I think is the word I'm talking Lackadaisical about. Lackadaisical would be that it's like you know laissez faire, like I was saying. But, it, like, uh, lackluster like would just be not being that good. Well one leads to the other. Well it depends. In my opinion. You At least for my for my my take on the episode. You like, can be laissez faire like, like but not lackluster. You can be lackluster and laissez faire. No, but I mean that the episode itself because of the tone was less affair was like Lex like that. Like a days ago. Like a days ago. Um led to me to believe that they I didn't feel like it was a, a good episode. But this one, because it has tension, because Yang actually kind of, kind of, because in the first, he was just very passive. But here he's kind of fighting back a little bit, like, okay, this sucks. Well, you know, the press is handling me. I'm in a bad situation. I don't know what I'm going to do. And even, you know, these conversations are more interesting, right? He is well, that's trusting why I was him. indicating in my notes that I felt like the first episode's entire point was to point out that that's how Yang's treatment of the world around him is. That the part that you didn't like, I felt like was the point. So the fact that you didn't like it would have normally represented to me that you just don't like the character of Yang, but you like Yang now, so... But I like him because he he actually is, you know, having conversations. He's it's understandable that he's in the sidelines because he's being overwhelmed by this situation, like taken away from him. You know, it's like, oh, you're a hero now. You're like, I don't want to be a hero. Sure, sure. He went from Basara yeah. to Hikaru. Yeah. And that's the first episode had elements working on him and not so much him interacting with anybody, especially because the people he tried to interact with kept trying to shoo him off because they're working to their own ends and they're about to try to desert with everybody but in this episode it's still the same guy he's just being forced to interact with people as you can see that he doesn't want to interact with yeah he's still the guy who wants to lay down on the couch for me the the juxtaposition is i want to lay down on my couch not even cleaning my dishes but at the same time is the guy who's proactively having to deal with stuff. Yeah, but also it's like, for example, when this lost uh, family member goes, like, oh, hey, you don't remember me. I'm the cousin, whatever. It's like, 
And he's thinking to himself, he doesn't say it out loud, but he's thinking to himself, yeah, motherfucker, where were you when I needed money? And my company, you weren't, you, you were so worried about my future then, right? You know, it, it, that's the kind of thing that you didn't see in the first episode. He was just going along and never had, except, except for actually missing his dad when he died. I mean, he actually showed real emotional resonance there. He wasn't like, oh, dad's dead. You know, he didn't do that at I the mean, moment. I mean, even that's, that's what we saw on screen, though. You know, Again, it, the uh, difference like, between him interacting with people and interacting with situations, he only had yeah. the situation to deal with. I guess technically he dealt with the crowd, but even like your argument during that episode was that his treatment of the crowd was unrealistic because they were like angry and upset, and it's weird that they just didn't do anything to him. And one of the things that stood we... out to me during the rewatch that I did to take the notes is that we do see like little freeze frames of him like in the middle of fights where the uh, crowd is trying to fight other officers that are out there on the floor. So apparently they do get into those situations. We just don't see them, but for the flashes of time going by. Yeah. Or maybe he's just that calming presence that he was there, like, oh, you know, maybe trying to show that he has that commanding presence, right? Even though he was a junior officer? I don't know, because immediately after he says, I'm in charge of the evacuation, they, like, walk away and, and have like an immediate conversation of, we're all going to fucking die. This kid's not going to be able to get us out of here. But eventually he does. He proves that he can, right? Well, so right after that is where we get the freeze frame of them fighting other people. So clearly, I guess they made a Karen to themselves that they tried to escalate, even though there's no escalation and fought another guy. Cause he's right there, like in the middle trying to stop them. So I guess literally the impetus of first episode was one thing to the point where they don't show us him having to deal with people. And then the second episode is, Let's have him deal with the most people. Also, for example, again, we talked about how he could have been taken advantage of. You never see him thinking about other than, oh, dad, you know, when he gets the the, the thing about the fake, uh, you know, fake art. He doesn't go like, maybe, this, maybe I should hire someone else because this guy might be telling me, you know, telling me a lie. While, again, when he's meeting with the, the you know, the cousin, he's like, yeah, this, this guy's full of shit, right? Or when he's talking to his superior, it's like, well, I don't want to do this because if, if this goes south, I'm done for, right? They're going to blame me for opening a case about a hero who now everybody's saying he was murdered, which presumably he was murdered by his own side because it was aboard a ship. He wasn't killed by the enemy, right? He wasn't killed in battle. He was killed by one of his friends or subordinates, whatever. So what happened, right? I think that's the implication. Murder well, implies... Technically... Well, like you said, he was killed on the ship. I guess technically the implication would be that he wasn't killed at the battle that he died in, but would may have been yeah. killed on the ship in the battle that he died in, which would imply somebody, as you just said, as somebody on the ship killed him. We don't literally have no details at the moment. Or oh, maybe the somebody died, died the way he's supposed to die. Or there was sabotage or somebody set him up so that he would, you know, be a situation where enemy fire or friendly fire would take him. There's a lot of things that could happen, but it wasn't just enemy action. Yeah, like Just, I said, I don't, it's actually, shot take him out. I don't actually recall the, the specific details until either I do the rewatch or the next episode tells us more. But I don't think we got that many details other than the fact that he may not have died in the battle that he's legendary for having won. Which and also, I guess he... could also, I guess there's a further implication there that possibly he didn't win all the battles that he said to have won. That mm-hmm. he didn't win that last one, but they gave it to him posthumously because they needed a legend of a galactic I mean, hero. He... Sorry, I had to complete that one. <laughs> He's a <laughs> hero. Um, they have a whole public relations department that they built a whole thing about him saving three million civilians. It's entirely possible this is in a previous scenario where they've needed a hero and instead of having one on hand, they just they made, made one. Yeah. You didn't. I mean, but he, he maybe it was one of those. I'm sorry. Now I'm just theorizing. Maybe he was gonna go public, like one of those. The guilt is getting to me that I'm stealing the valor of all these other heroes that individually won their things, and they're like, we can't let you do that. Such a shame. He died in that battle that he won. By the way, we've got yeah. heroes here in the Free Planets Alliance, like Johnny Rico. Yeah. He's doing his part. Would you like to know more? <laughs> Click on the Patreon. Yeah. Um. Yeah. 
It's a good episode. I mean, I still I liked the first episode. But that's only because that's literally almost one for one from a DNT episode. So I already knew that one, and I never had a problem with a DNT one. Um, this one was I don't know, I would say more of the same because it's the same character. Uh, unexpected twists of flashing a picture of a woman that we've never seen before. Think to be some school somewhere or somebody where actually she doesn't seem to be a school. She just seems to be. Well, really, it was a bust picture, high. so we don't really yeah. kind of know. Oh, but, but it wasn't a bust picture. Like... It was a picture of... A bust is from the chest up, but a bust yeah, also <laughs> means breast, so I don't know. I don't know the correct yeah, terminology I'm using. I don't think she was in the academy, because she doesn't seem to have, like, a uniform. Like, the academy. I wouldn't be so... able to tell from this high up, you know? I mean, the shoulder boards and stuff like that, they shoulder would have, like, boards. rankings. Yeah, they'll have literally shoulder pads, rankings. I believe you meant. Shoulder... No, no. There's pads and there's shoulder boards, which is you know that ranking they put in top of the shoulder, like yellow. That's a shoulder board. Uh, they wear their rankings on their uh, collar. In a collar, yeah, but you might have other things as well. See, right? the thing you're trying to describe is I don't think I've ever seen before because usually it's either the chest alignment, which is like your uh, deployments and whatnot, your ribbons, and, your campaign and then ribbons, your and insignias anyway. that I know. I don't know yeah. anything you wear right here. And ironically, I'm they looking at the overlay, which I'm not, even, I'm not even talking about your character. My character might actually have shoulder boards, and that he's wearing like yeah. tassels on the edge yeah. of his like cloak. Those look like yeah, boards. but you have yeah, shoulder boards. It's it's uh, not simply tassels. It's would have some kind of ranks. Like an admiral would have would have both a, a, uh, something in the collar and also like three stars or something. Well, I think I think if we go back, to, let me see if the admiral actually here's has. A, here's a thing. I don't know if this exists in this version of the show. I'm going to bring it up now because I don't think there's going to be like an episode that, that describes it. In the Empire, yes, the, the admiral in the, does. In, in the Empire, the, yeah. uh, the rank is by your collar and they don't wear like insignias or like rank epitaphs or anything. It's literally... Like, you'll have a silver line, uh, a gold line, and a silver line. That's entirely the color. So it's entirely... No, no, the... no, no, no wouldn't be showing. If you look, if you go back to uh, I the don't Admiral... Rewind. The Admiral. We covered this last time. Well, don't people who do... Uh, there is... He has, like, a little kind of, like, triangular thing on the shoulder. That would be a shoulder board. It can be raised. It can be in line. But it's still on the shoulder. So. I never said you were wrong. I've just said that this makes no sense to me, and I've never seen it before, which is ignorance if you think about it. it uh, Max had all the time, you know, the exaggerated stuff that he had around the shoulders. My problem if you're using Max is that Max is more like again. I'm pointing down on the overlay. My my yeah. uh, my guy here, which literally could be wearing like a plank of wood over himself, <laughs> yeah, because he's got tassels hanging off his cloak. But that's his cloak. I don't uh -huh. think it ever looks that way in the uh, actual show. Oh, also, right. we also get a little more into, oh, yeah, the president of the Federation is someone who led to a uh, rebellion against the Empire. Maybe the Empire really is, you know, hard, wants to defeat them because they're still considered to be in rebellion. Lessons. Yeah, Lessons. literal, yeah. yeah I, got, I got things, but I can't say them, so. Um, yeah, I mean, I like that they brought him up, though, like, picture in the in the room. Just look at him. Yeah, he doesn't look like a happy guy. But again, he he broke out of uh, the gulag. So, like, you know, how happy could you be? Well, I guess you would be happier after you broke out of the gulag. But <laughs> I guess it would leave a mark on you, right? It's not Hogan's heroes all the time. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And final thoughts. I like this episode much better than I like the other one. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, once again, I have been Theta. This has been Lessons. We've been Stone Face Reactions, and we will catch you next time. Bye bye. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching another Stone Face Reactions. If you have an idea of another video we could go ahead and watch, go ahead and put it in the comments down below, and we'll add it to the wheel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you thought about this video and what parts you liked. And until then, we'll see you next time. Is this too goofy?